hey, wait a minute. Stop right where you are. Do you realize that you were created by God? Do you realize, my friend, that you were created for God? Do you realize that God created you for his pleasure? And how are you doing? Are you paying attention to God? Are you living for his pleasure? Or are you living for your own? There are consequences if you live for your own. We'll talk about it today. Hello, my friend. I'm excited about today's lesson. And the reason that I'm excited about today's lesson is because of the portion of Isaiah that we're in. When you read Isaiah 24, 25, 26, and 27, I, I, I mean, it, it absolutely, in a sense, wipes you out. It wipes you out if you stop and you think of what God is saying and what God is going to do. He tells us in Isaiah 24, 25, 26, 27, what he has in store for the world. We've seen in Isaiah 13 through 23, his oracle to various nations. But now he's taking his message worldwide. And he's telling us what he is going to do to the earth and why. God tells us in Isaiah chapter 24, precious one, that he is going to lay the earth waste. That he is going to devastate the earth. And he tells us why he is going to do this. Listen to what it says in Isaiah 24, verse 1. Behold, the Lord lays its, the earth waste, devastates it, distorts its surface, and scatters its inhabitants. It says in verse 3, the earth, the earth will be completely laid waste and completely despoiled. Why? For the Lord has spoken his word. In other words, this is going to happen, precious one, because God has commanded it. Because God says, this is what I'm going to do. And you say, but why? When God is the creator of the heavens and the earth, why is God going to do this? Because he tells us later that he is going to judge the host of heaven. He is going to judge the kings and the inhabitants of the earth. It's a terrible time that is coming. It is a time when no one will escape, when the maid and the mistress will both be on an equal playing field, when the debtor and the creditor will both be on an equal playing field. God is going to move over the face of the earth. Why is he going to do this? It says, the earth will be completely laid waste, completely despoiled, for the Lord has spoken his word. The Lord, earth mourns and withers, the world fades and withers, the exalted of the people of the earth fade away. The earth is also polluted by its inhabitants. In other words, the people of this earth who have been created like you by God and for God, the people that have ignored that, the people that have walked away, the people that have said, forget it, forget it. I'm going to live the way I want to live. God, because of those people, God is going to deal with them. And this is what it says. It says, the earth is also polluted by its inhabitants, for they, they, the people that he created transgressed laws, violated statutes, altered God's word, broke the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth. It says, and those who live in it are held guilty. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few are left in it. There is a day, precious one, and this is our theme for this week, when the party 
is over. And when the party is over, it's over because God devastates the earth. Because God is upset with the inhabitants of this earth that have polluted the earth. And so therefore God burns with fire and devours the people and few are left in it. We saw that they had done three things, that they had transgressed the laws, that they had violated the statutes, that they had broken the everlasting covenant, that they had set that aside. And so what I want us to do today is I want us to go back and I want us to get a grasp of from the beginning. I want us to see the first time the term everlasting covenant is used. Now, when I use the word covenant, I want you to know that a covenant is a solemn binding agreement. It's made by passing, in a sense, through pieces of flesh. It is a covenant that is cut, and it implies that there is a shedding of blood. Now, you don't see those characteristics the first time that you look at covenant in Genesis chapter 6, where, is, where we find the word used for the first time. But as you progress and as you get to Genesis chapter 15, there you see God making a covenant with Abraham and a, uh, the animals being cut in two and God coming down and passing through the pieces of those animals. And that day it says God made a covenant with Abraham. Now, one of the things that I tell you in our study guide, and do you know that we have a free downloadable study guide on Isaiah for you so that you can study with us? And one of the things that we teach you to do is we teach you to mark the text because when you interact with the text, when you take your Bible and you begin to mark it, one of the things that we tell you when you come to Isaiah chapter 24, you want to mark every reference to covenant. What you want to do is you want to double underline in green every geographical location. And then because it's the earth and the earth is made of dirt, then, then and other things, granted, uh, then I color it brown. And so what you do is, is you uh, mark every reference to the earth, but we also want you to mark every reference to covenant. Now it's one place in here and it's called the everlasting covenant. So I color it red because a covenant implies a shedding of blood and I put yellow around it because God is the sovereign administrator of every single covenant. In other words, if a covenant, if the solemn binding agreement is made, God is watching over to make sure that that agreement is kept. Now, in the light of that, in the light of the fact that God is going to devastate the earth, that he's going to distort its surface, and that he is going to burn up its inhabitants and few are going to be left, I want us to go back to the very book of beginnings. I want us to go back to Genesis chapter 1. Because in Genesis chapter 1, what we have is we have how everything came into being. In Genesis chapter 1 in verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it says, And the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. So what you have is you have an account of six days of creation when God said, and it was so, and it was good. And so all the way up to the sixth day, God is creating the heavens and the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, the host of heaven. He is creating the animals. He's creating the plants. He's creating it all. How does he do it? He speaks. That's how he's going to devastate the earth. He's going to speak and it's going to happen. So he speaks and the earth comes into existence. Now you say, I don't believe that. Science doesn't support that. I want to tell you something. Theory does not support it if you have the wrong theory. 
But science is not contradictory to the fact that there is an earth that was created with a purpose and a plan. And it does not deny the fact that there is a creator. You see, beloved, it's a matter of faith. You're either going to listen to man and his concept of what happened when he wasn't even there, or you're going to listen to what God says, who was there and who created it all. You take your pick. You take your pick. And you know what? You can make the choice, but you can't choose the consequences. God's the one that chooses the consequences. So, and, and you know that. Because you've reaped consequences that you never intended to reap, that you didn't want to experience. And yet they came. Why? Because you transgressed some of God's laws. I've reaped consequences because I've transgressed God's laws. I've reaped consequences with, with my two boys because I was immoral, because I divorced their father, because I did not keep the covenant of marriage. I've reaped the consequences. And then I've come to know Jesus Christ and I have known the forgiveness of sins. But I also understand that I was created by God and for God. Because once you come to know the word of God, God opens the eyes of your understanding. So in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And then it says, Let them rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, over the cattle over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his image. God made man to rule over his creation. And yet what has man done according to Isaiah 24? Man has polluted the earth that God put him on and God gave him rule over. And what is going to happen? We'll talk about it in just a minute. God created man, male and female, he created them. He put them in a perfect environment called the Garden of Eden. He told them what they could do and what they shouldn't do. The one thing they shouldn't do was eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A serpent came into the garden. They listened to the serpent. They believed a lie instead of believing God. And when they listened to the serpent and they believed the lie and they took the fruit and they ate the fruit. Eve took it, ate it first, gave it to Adam, and Adam ate. And by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world. So that when Adam and Eve procreated, when they fulfilled God's command to multiply and fill the earth, when they had their first child, they gave birth to a little sinner. Why one man, sin entered into the world and death passed upon all men in that all have sinned. As a consequence, God drove them out of the Garden of Eden to protect them because there was the tree of life in that garden. And if they had eaten of the fruit of that tree as sinners, they would have remained sinners for all time. So to keep them from eating of that tree and so that he might give them life another way through Jesus Christ, through the promise of the Messiah who would come, the Christ that would triumph over the serpent, the devil of old, in order to protect them, he drove them out of the garden. And as they had children, they had two sons, Cain and Abel. Now, what I want you to see is God created you in his image. God created you for his pleasure. He created mankind. So when I'm talking about you, I'm talking about you being a member of mankind. But what most of mankind has done, and it gets worse and worse and worse as the day comes, what the most, of, uh, as the coming of the Lord comes, uh, what has happened is man has become more and more corrupt. We have turned away from God. The world is throwing a party. And it is a party in rebellion to God, breaking his commandments, transgressing, violating his statutes, and breaking the everlasting covenant. So let's go back now and see what happens when Cain and Abel, the two sons of, of day, uh, the two sons, excuse me, of Adam and Eve, get in a rile and Cain kills Abel. 
So now God has to judge Abel, but watch what he says. He says in verse 9, Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he says, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. Now what we see is man has polluted the earth. And what pollutes the earth is the shedding of the blood of another human being because God was create because uh, God created man in his image. And so what we find is we find Cain killing Abel and the voice of, of the blood of Abel crying from the ground. And he says, now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you cultivate the ground, it will no longer yield its strength to you. You will be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is too great. I cannot bear it. Behold, you have driven me this day from the face of the ground and from your face I will be hidden and I will be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth and whoever finds me will kill me. And then he says, okay, whoever kills you will pay sevenfold. It says, then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod. Now I want you to get this, east of Eden. There's a movie called East of Eden. East of Eden. When he drove Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, they went to the east. Now they, Cain, is going to the east of Eden. And he is a wonder and he is suffering as a result of this. Now from there, I want you to go to Genesis chapter 6. Remember, we're looking at this everlasting covenant. And I want you to see the connection between this covenant and the earth and our responsibility to the earth that God has created, that God has given man rulership over. And so it says in Genesis chapter 6, now it came about when men began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men were beautiful and they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose. Some people believe that this is a, a uniting of, of, of the spirit world with the human world. Whether it is or not, you just know that they transgressed against God. And God says, my spirit shall not strive with man forever because he's flesh. Nevertheless, his days shall be 120 years. They're only going to live 120 years more and I'm going to move in judgment because of this. It says in verse 5, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. And the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I've created from the face of the land, from man to animals to creeping things to the birds of the sky. I am sorry. I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Remember, God is going to devastate the earth. He's going to distort its surface. Uh, its surface. He's going to lay it waste. Why? Because man has polluted the earth. He's going to burn them. But a few will be left, even as Noah was left. And so he says this, he says, verse 11, the earth was corrupt in the sight of God. The earth was filled with violence and God looked on the earth and it was corrupt and all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. He says the earth is filled with violence because of them, because of men who have partied. They ate, they drank, they gave in marriage. They lived as if God did not exist. It's what the days of Noah were like and Matthew tells us that. And so he says, I'm going to prepare an ark. Noah, prepare an ark. He says, I will establish, verse 18, my covenant with you. And you will enter the ark. So out of all that he created, only eight people are going to survive. Noah and Mrs. Noah and Shem, Ham and Japheth and their wives. And so we have the flood. And in Genesis chapter 9, God says, now, now. The flood is over. 
and I want you to multiply and I want you to fill the earth. But I want you to know this. I will require your lifeblood from every beast. I will require it. From every man, from every man's brother, I will require the life of man. I made man in my image. And if another man kills him, then I'm going to bring judgment. I'm going to require their blood. Why? Because you, as a human being, were created in the image of God. You may have distorted that image, but you were created in the image of God and your life is sacred. And so then God says, he goes on to say, Now behold, I myself do establish my covenant with you and your descendants after you. Verse 12, this is the sign of the covenant which I am making between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all successive generations. I will set my bow in the cloud and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. I will bring, when I bring a cloud over the earth, the bow will be seen in the cloud. In other words, I consume the earth and all of its inhabitants with a worldwide flood. But I preserved you. I judged not by fire, I judged by water. But I'm telling you, the next time that you will see a heavy rain, look for the cloud because I'm not going to do that again. He says, when the bow was in the cloud, verse 16, then I will look upon it to remember, here it is, the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all that are on the earth. God expects you as man, as woman, to live for him. And when you don't, you pollute the earth. We'll talk about it in our next lesson. Oh, beloved, how I love to share the Word of God with you. How I love to use the spiritual gift that God has given me, the gift of teaching, so that I can take this book and open it with you and study it with you. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you with all my being for the fact that you have contributed to this program. For the fact that you have come alongside and said, I want others to know the word of God. I want to keep you on the air. I know that we are in the last days and the most important thing that we can do is hold forth the word of life in the midst of this crooked and perverse generation. And I thank you. I thank you so very, very much. I want you to look for a minute as, as we bring today to a close, as we look at God's precept for life, I want you to know that the truths that you're learning are not just for you. They're for you to share with others. He says, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus. Listen carefully. Who is to judge the living and the dead? And we're going to see that. And by his appearing and his kingdom, and we're going to see that, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove and rebuke and exhort with patience and instruction. Why? He says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound teaching, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. Now listen, and they will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. Thank you for wanting not just experiences, not just a, a program of miracles and sitting there and watching other people get healed and things like this. Thank you for wanting to hear about sin, for wanting to hear about righteousness, for wanting to hear about judgment so that you know the truth about God. Thank you for, for taking these truths and allowing me to use them to reprove you and reprove me, to rebuke us if we, if, if we are wrong, but to do it with, with great patience and great instruction. Thank you, beloved for desiring truth. Now, 
What are you hearing? What did you hear today? The Lord is going to judge the earth. Why? Because it has been polluted by its inhabitants. So you and I need to warn people to flee from the world's party and join God. Thank you for watching today. All the programs you see on Precepts for Life are available on CD and DVD. To order your copy of today's program, log on to our website at preceptsforlife.com. To download your free copy of the study guide or to find out more about Precept Ministries International, click on our website or call us today at 1-800-763-1990. Join us for our next program as Kay shares more Precepts for Life.